Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about the brachial plexus. To know about the brachial plexus, you need to know what it is made up of and where it is present. So briefly describing, brachial plexus is the plexus of nerves formed in the cervical and the first thoracic nerve. So these nerves come out of the um, vertebral foramen and they are intermixing with each other and finally giving rise to terminal nerves which go and innervate different muscle groups. Okay. So we know that where is the brachial plexus present? The brachial plexus is present in the axilla. The axilla is present from here to here. So axilla. The, there is two parts. The brachial plexus can be divided because of this bone. This is the collarbone or the clavicle. The part present above is the supraclavicular part of the brachial plexus and below is the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Okay, everybody. So let us now talk about how it is formed and which nerves participate in the formation of the brachial plexus. We know that there are several different spinal nerves emerging but the most importantly the cervical nerves which are below the level of the cervical plexus that is uh, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8 and then T1 and sometimes T2 also they all intermix to form the brachial plexus. Here we have different vertebrae. Let's just imagine that here is a vertebral column and from here there are the nerves coming out. The dorsal ramus has already been given, the posterior ramus. The anterior ramus will continue to the formation of the plexus. Always remember this. So here we have the C5 nerve, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Remember mind that there are uh, 7 cervical vertebrae but there are 8 cervical nerves. This is because here the 7 cervical vertebra it has two relations that is above also it has a cervical nerve and below also it has a cervical nerve whereas in a thoracic vertebra the T1 nerve emerges from the lower side of the thoracic vertebra in every thoracic vertebra so that was a different topic so here we have the formative nerves of the brachial plexus what is the function of the brachial plexus the brachial plexus is the primary uh, nervous control and the entire sensory stimulus from the superior extremity that is from the pectoral region to the up arm and the forearm and the hand and the dorsum surface also so okay let's talk about it finally so okay we have here c5 c6 c7 c8 t1 the formative will be c5 say t1 c5 to t1 will be your formative nerves of the brachial plexus what happens now is that nerves come out like this they have already given the posterior ramus so they are all coming out the c5 and c6 by the way these are called as roots so let me write them these are the roots what are roots roots we know we, we have seen a plant so there is roots which forms the plant so this is the root of the brachial plexus so c5 c6 c7 c8 t1 what happens is that the roots of c5 and c6 cohes means they join together so what do we get we get something else what happens after root in a plant if there is a root after it there is a trunk then there are divisions then there are branches right so exactly same the tree pattern is followed here also what I said is c5 and c6 the roots merge to form a trunk okay the c7 root is solo okay as the C7 vertebra is solo but it has dual relations the same way C7 root is solo whereas the C8 as well as the T1 roots combine with each other so that was the roots what happened again C5 C6 combined C7 remained solo C8 T1 combined this led to the formation of the trunks so next thing is trunks what how do we name these trunks this name this this is the name according to the ascending order that is we have the first is the upper trunk the middle trunk and the lower trunk do you get that upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk now there is a special point to be noted here is that as we have seen that the roots and trunks are formed there are some nerves which directly arise nerves these are also nerves but those nerves will be the small out outcropping branches of the roots or the trunks so there are different nerves that come out of the roots and the trunks to label them First of all, I would like to tell you that the C5 root also gives its contribution for the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve is the primary muscle, uh, muscle innervation for the diaphragm. It arises from C3, C4 and C5. Most of it is from C4 but C5 also gives a contribution. So this goes to phrenic nerve. 
this is for phrenic nerve rootlet okay what 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 branches do we have from the roots other than this we have a nerve called as the long thoracic nerve the long thoracic nerve okay long thoracic nerve runs around here it is called the nerve of bell it is for the innervation of the muscle called as serratus anterior the serratus anterior helps to overhead abduct the arm the long thoracic nerve arises from c5 c6 and c7 and all of these they combine and finally we get this long thoracic nerve innervating the serratus anterior muscle serratus anterior muscle or long thoracic nerve or nerve of bell okay mind the acronyms please we have we have another nerve called as the dorsal scapular nerve do you get that so c5 root c5 root will give its contribution to first phrenic nerve phrenic nerve is root value c3 c4 c5 remember c4 is important then we have the long thoracic nerve or nerve of bell this is for the serratus anterior its root value is c5 c6 c7 what is the root value root value is the roots from which the nerves come from okay so we have phrenic nerve long thoracic and we have the dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve is now supplying the rhomboids rhomboid is major and minor so we have nerve to rhomboid or dorsal scapular nerve the root value is c5 so that was the branches of the roots what happened let's recap the spinal nerve c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 they came out they mixed with each other c5 and c6 combined c7 remained solo c8 and t1 combined giving rise to upper middle and lower trunks the c5 root contributed to giving different branches that directly innervate the muscle groups we have the phrenic nerve which is a primary innervation of the diaphragm we have the long thoracic nerve which is the innervation of the serratus anterior for overhead abduction and then we have this dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve is a nerve to rhomboids the rhomboids pull the scapula medially and also elevate it okay that was all about the roots now coming to the trunks here we have the trunks so there is the upper trunk the middle trunk and the lower trunk the trunks also give branches just like the roots but here the thing is that only the upper trunk will give the branches none other trunk will give the branch so the branches of the trunk we can tell here is that there are two branches this one and this one the key to remembering these branches that both of them are s that is the upper branch will be your supra scapular the upper branch will be your supra scapular supra scapular nerve the supra scapular nerve runs around here and goes to the scapula and innervates the muscles of the supra spinous and the infra spinous fossa that is the supra spinatus and the infra spinatus okay then we have next s is nerve to subclavius subclavius is a very small muscle located here it arises from the first rib and it is inserted in the clavicle so innervation to that is from the trunk so we have seen that the upper trunk gives two branches that is the supra scapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius this is the upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk do not have any such branches the key thing to note here is that there is a special uh, thing it will come in play is that this entire structure is located within this circle this is known as the herbs point i will later describe what the herbs point is but just remember that the upper trunk along with the supra scapular nerves and the nerve to subclavius is related in the herbs point herbs point is a region okay what will happen after trunks like we discussed in a tree after trunk there is a division so division means that the trunks will get divided into two things that is trunk anterior and trunk posterior meaning if that the trunk is like this if this is the trunk one will go uh, anteriorly and the other will go posteriorly this will be the divisions of the trunk so here we have let's just say that i have an anterior division here of this guy like this i hope you can see i have an anterior division like this 
I have another anterior division like this and again I have another anterior division like this. What will happen now? Obviously as there are anterior divisions there will be posterior divisions like this like this. Okay, let me get you out. Okay. So what happens here is that the anterior division represented in blue anterior divisions of the upper trunk and the middle trunk they combine like this plexuses is like this my friend they combine very much so upper trunk middle trunk anterior division anterior division combine to form something else what about the posterior division here a key thing to note is that the posterior division of the upper trunk this is the posterior division of the upper trunk the posterior division of the middle trunk and the posterior division of the lower trunk this is the lower trunk all of these also combine so it's gonna look messy but yeah that's what it is like this okay I hope you are understanding because this is a shit diagram okay okay what did I do I just told you that the trunks get divided into anterior and posterior divisions like this now what happens is that the anterior division of the upper trunk and the anterior division of the middle trunk these both combine okay to form this structure the posterior division of the upper trunk the posterior of the middle and the posterior of the lower the posterior of upper middle and lower all of these combine so we have this we have this and now what is happening is that the only thing the only thing which is left here is this guy the anterior trunk of the anterior division of the lower trunk this remains solo remember how c7 is solo just like that the anterior trunk anterior division of the lower trunk also remains solo this is a very complicated thing but it is very easy to understand what are these things then formed? If these were divisions, we know that these were the roots. Here we had trunks. These were divisions. These are chords. These are chords. Chords of brachial plexus. Now remember, I told you in the starting that the brachial plexus is present in the supraclavicular part and also the infraclavicular part. The things before the chords this is located in the supraclavicular space and this is located in infraclavicular space that means the part of the axilla here the cervical axillary canal this will contain the roots the trunks and the divisions whereas this part of the axilla will contain the cords and the branches as we will see 